Hello everyone, welcome back to the mini hack solved series. In this episode, we'll solve Apex hack. We'll create a simple Apex class to convert currencies based on configured conversion rates. We'll be using Salesforce multiple currency feature to configure the conversion rates. But before that, let me tell you that mini hacks is one of the most popular areas both at Dreamforce and Trailblazer TX, where people come in, pick up a hack and solve the hack. The hack contains the requirements on what to do, but not how to do it. It also specifies the features that ought to be used while solving the hack. So let's go and check today's hack. Acme Inc. is a multinational conglomerate that deals with customers across the globe. You are a developer at Acme Inc. Your Salesforce administrator has asked for a means to automatically convert the annual revenue for each account to any of the supplied currencies supported by your organization, something like euros, pounds, and yen. We know Salesforce supports multiple currencies and it is not configured yet in our org. So the first thing to do is to configure multiple currencies. How to configure is listed in the detailed requirements. So let's go ahead and complete the requirements. I am in my Salesforce org. From the setup in the Salesforce org, let's do a quick find for company information. Let's click edit and enable a checkbox to activate multiple currencies. But wait, before you activate, make sure to go through these considerations for enabling multiple currencies. One of the important considerations is once you enable multiple currencies, you cannot disable it. So make sure you first try this on a developer edition or a scratch org and familiarize yourself with the implications of enabling multiple currencies. Okay, let's activate multiple currencies. We have completed the first step, so let's now go back and check the requirements. The next requirement is to use the managed currencies and add these currency conversion rates to the list of supported currencies in the org. You can see in the requirements that the currency is represented in a string format. For example, EUR means Euros, USD means US Dollars. This shortcut string notation is the ISO code for the currency. Okay, let's now add the conversion rates. Let's go back to the company information page in setup. Let's click the currency setup button. Here you can manage currencies. You can see a list of active currencies in the org and you can also see that USD is the default corporate currency for this org. And its conversion rate is set to 1. You might understand why it is set to 1 because that is the default currency and we are going to measure other currencies related to this currency. You can add more currencies and set the currency conversion rate related to USD. If you wish you can also change the default corporate currency. Let's look at one of the important considerations while adding currencies as well. You cannot delete the currency after it is added to the organization's list of supported currencies. Though you can deactivate it and the end users can only see the active currencies. Okay. Let's add the currencies listed in the requirements. Let's add euros and the conversion rate. According to the given conversion rate in requirements, 1 USD equals 0.908 euros. Let's limit it to two decimal places. Let's click save and new. Similarly, let's add the British pound. And let's also add Japanese N and save it. With that, we have configured the list of supported currencies. Let's now go back and check the requirements. The next requirement is to create an Apex class called Currency Converter. We'll use VS Code to create and work with Apex class. You can also choose to use Code Builder or Developer Console. Here I am in VS Code. Let's open the command palette and create a new SFDX project.
you can save it in your favorite location. Let's connect our org by clicking this plug icon. Let's select authorize an org, project default, give alias, and enter. It redirects to the browser where we can enter credentials to connect the org. Allow CLI to access your org. Now it is successfully authenticated. Let's go back to VS Code and create the Apex class. You can also launch the command palette using the shortcut keys. For instance, command shift P on Mac or control shift P on Windows. So let's use the shortcut key and launch the command palette. Let's type Apex and select create Apex class. Give the name currency converter and select the default folder. If you check the requirements, you can see that we also need to create a method to convert the currency with the Apex code. It takes three input arguments from currency to currency and the amount to be converted. Let's go and add this method to our class. While you are working with the code, I also want to show you some of the tools you can use with VS Code. I can click in the class, launch the command palette and select insert snippet command. You can see various options here. We want to create a method, so let's go and select new method. You can see that it has created the boilerplate code. Let's give public static and return type decimal. Let's give the method name convert currency with Apex code. Let's add the three arguments from currency of type string to currency of type string and a decimal amount. Now we need to add the logic for converting the currency. There is a hint in the requirement. It says to find the stored conversion rate from the currency type object. We can get the ISO code and the associated conversion rate from the records of this object. We can write a SQL query for this. As I said before, let's leverage the tools to create a SQL query. We'll use SQL Builder and you can launch that from the command palette. Select the currency type object. Now select the fields, ISO code and conversion rate. We can also apply filters. Let's say ISO codes in. Let's give from currency. Let's say EUR and also give to currency. Let's say GBP. Let's run the query and see how it works. Cool. Now let's copy the SQL query and paste it within square brackets in Apex. It returns currency type records, so let's store it in a variable. Let's replace hard-coded EUR and GBP with from currency and to currency. The next step is to find the conversion rates for the values passed. Let's define a map to store the ISO code and the corresponding conversion rate for the supplied values. Let's write down the comment for documentation. We'll use string for ISO code and decimal for conversion rate. Let's iterate through the currency types and add the ISO code conversion rate mappings to the map. Now we have conversion rates. We know that the amount is in from currency that has to be converted to the to currency. We can write a single formula logic for that. But let's simplify it and do it in two steps. First, let's convert the amount to default currency that is USD. We will then convert the amount to to currency. Let's get the conversion rate for the from currency. conversion rates dot get of from currency. Now let's convert it to default currency. We can do it by dividing the amount with conversion rate. 
we can now convert the amount to the two currency. If the two currency is the USD, we need not do anything as we already have the amount in USD. We need to convert only if two currency is not USD. So let's put that condition. We'll get the conversion rate for two currency. We'll now convert our amount in dollars to two currency by multiplying it with the conversion rate. Let's finally return the converted amount. That's all. Let's save it and deploy it to the org. Now it is time to test our code. We can use anonymous apex further. Let's go to the scripts folder, apex and open hello.apex. Let's write code to invoke the static method convert currency with apex code of the currency converter class. Let's convert 80 euros to British pounds. Let's print it with system.debug. Let's launch the command parrot and execute anonymous apex with the editor contents. Let's now go and look into the logs. You can see that 80 euros equals around 68.1 GBP. In this video, we saw how to create Apex class to convert currencies using Salesforce multi-currency feature. While writing the code, we saw how to use code snippets, Sockle Builder, etc. There might be more than one solution to solve the hack. If you find a better solution, please let us know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please click the like button, share it and subscribe for getting more videos that are getting published on Salesforce Developers YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video.